What's up, ballers? Welcome to the channel. If you haven't yet, hit like, hit subscribe, and it does something to this algorithm so it allows more ballers like you to love and get more content like this. So let's talk about today's topic. Today's topic is going to be about when is it the right time to get back into your sport and fully begin to perform athletically? Okay, when is it the true right time to perform athletically in your sport and everything that it requires from you? Now, this is going to apply to every bit of athletics that is out there. Basketball is just something that we advertise towards, but it's we work with every kind of athlete. Okay, so take into consideration that you're an athlete of some sort. Okay, and if you're an athlete of some sort, then typically you've got a couple of skills you have to do. You have to, you have to be able to run for the most part. Okay. You got to be able to jump. You have to be able to change direction. Okay. You have to be able to rotate your body in some way, right? And then you also have to be able to throw arm overhead, pull, push, hit, take impact, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different skills that are required from you as an athlete. Okay. And this applies to most sports. So these are the athletic things you're doing. Now, if you play basketball, you're playing defense, you're playing football, whatever it is, you're having to get low into a low position, an athletic stance, and then change direction. You have to go from low position to a, to a sprint, to stopping on a dime, to all these different skills that you have to do all at once. And as such, after you have incurred something like an injury, Now, you have to understand first, before we start thinking about, oh, when can I get back to my sport? How fast can I get back to my sport? We have to consider, how did this injury even happen in the first place? Okay, how did it start? Now, most often than not, you can trace it back to the first injury you ever had. So say, for example, you had some sort of ankle injury. You had the ankle injury, but that ankle injury then led you to have compensations. Okay, so you know you started to compensate with your other ankle, or you started to compensate with some other joint, or your other other part of your body, your left side of your body, and then you did physical therapy, but the movements were so low grade. Okay, so there are low grade exercises. If you consider what you're doing here, these are very high grade, high impact movements that you're applying on the body. So imagine you had an ankle injury, and then if you don't do the adequate amount of work to prepare yourself for this high grade movement, it is very easy for you to re injure yourself. Okay, it is very easy to do this, it doesn't take very much. Okay, say you do your Theragun, you are stretching, and then you get back into strength training, but even strength training can be looked at as a high grade movement. Just think about it. If you can barely like bear weight on your ankle and now you're having to do things like deadlifts and jump squats and you know whatever else you have to do, step ups, even this can be high grade. And if we haven't mastered this part, how do we expect to master even more complex things that are even highly unpredictable? So, you know, you're here, this is predictable. You're low grade. You sort of progress into more predictable, more advanced stuff that goes more and more unpredictable. But then all of a sudden we jump right back into something we're not ready for. So let's talk about that, right? So 
you you go from this low grade stuff to all of a sudden going into high grade movement and it just doesn't add up like yes your physical therapy probably helped this is not to take away from what your physical therapy did by all means we we've even had conversations with a few of you that have said no but physical therapy helped but if it truly helped then we wouldn't be re-injured okay we wouldn't have done all this work and then by way of doing all this work we jump too fast too soon jump back into sport and then guess what we are back to the injury we started with okay we are back to the injury we began with in the first place okay now this is a problem we see this all the time and the problem if you notice this like people do the physical therapy do the chiropractor i mean i can insert you can replace this with chiropractor guys chiro you can replace this with uh, osteopath uh, you can replace it with some sort of functional training you can replace it with compression wraps icing cryotherapy it, you know just insert it with something anything that you have tried for a little while and then this is what constantly happens they do all this they jump back into sport they don't know if they're truly ready they just do it they're thinking they are and guess what happens they go back to the injury if anything they incur another injury, a secondary to the first injury. So if it was the ankle, maybe now it's the knee. Maybe they sprained their LCL. And just like that, they are back in the same game, okay? Doing the same mix of stuff, not getting to where they want to be. If this sounds like you right now, I want you to comment below and tell me about your story. But this is what happens. Then, then after this whole process, they go through the same stuff. Then it's a back injury. Then it's a shoulder problem. Then it's an elbow problem. You name it. There's always something that comes about after that first injury because the root cause of the injury was never addressed. And this gap that exists between, there's a huge gap, guys between injury and performance. There's a gap. And this is the gap we have to bridge. Okay? This is the gap we have to bridge in order to make sure that you can actually get here without hurting yourself. And look, we, we want more than that for you guys. You get there and you can consistently do these things that actually make you an athlete without hurting yourself. There's a direct correlation from here to here. Direct correlation. They are not separate, guys. Your ability to be pain-free is directly correlated to your ability to perform. If anything, that is the most important thing. You don't want this. Because if this is happening, the root cause is most likely that you had poor mechanics somewhere in your body while you were doing these movements. Okay? And those poor mechanics in your body compounded over time. It didn't just magically happen. It wasn't a freak accident. It compounded over time. When we started to push through those little aches and pains in our body, we began to push through the previous injury. We began to push through practice, just willing it without understanding what needs to fire, what needs to engage, how are we supposed to feel in an athletic stance when we jump, when we land, when we run, when we change direction, when we rotate, when we throw, when we throw our arms overhead, when we pull, push, and even when we do our strength training, what are we supposed to feel here? 
And if we don't know what we even, and if we don't know what we even feel in our strength training, which is supposed to prepare us to even be able to practice this, because this is a controlled environment, but it's even more controlled than the rehab. I mean, it's even more unpredictable rather than your rehab. Your rehab was predictable. You can maintain some level of control, but then you get here and it gets a bit unpredictable unless you practice proper mechanics even here. And you take this and you train in specific shapes that actually mimic your sport for a long period of time. Because chances are, what got you to the injury in the first place did not happen overnight. It took a couple of years. If you've been playing your sport or doing your sport for, I don't know, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years, and then all of a sudden we're expecting physical therapy or some injection or steroid shot, steroid shot or some wrap or some icing to magically get us out of there within two or three months and back on the court after 10, 11, 12 years of poor mechanics. That just doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. Okay. There's no way we can accommodate for that many years, every injury that we have, it took some time to develop. It may have taken a long time. And that means our process get from injury back to elite athletic performance and resilient performance, meaning you do this for as long as you want, as long as your career can take you. If this is what you truly want, okay? This is the ultimate thing you want, not just the fleeting emotion of, I gotta play now, I gotta play now. No, if you want this, guys, then we have to take, a, take into consideration how long it took for us to incur the injury. Poor mechanics happen over time. That means they have to be corrected how? Over time. You have to correct them slowly, systematically. And at minimum team, at minimum, start with a year of rewiring your mechanics before you jump back into your sport. Yes, it sounds crazy, but I'm being honest and I'm being real with you. Not many doctors, not many physical therapists, not many chiropractors will tell you this. They'll say, oh yeah, you're ready, go back because they're trying to appease your emotions. But I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to tell you the truth, okay? And the truth is you're going to need some time. You're going to need some time to understand a couple things, okay? You have to understand what your weaknesses are. You have to understand what needs to engage in every position that mimics the positions I need to get into in my sport. And I need to train for that, for that in a systematic way, okay? And before you do any of that, the first month, first two, two months, get you out of pain signaling get blood flow, get range of motion back, get control, get stability. That's like the first two, three months, even the first four months. Then we have to take that concept, take it further, understand what needs to engage in every position that mimics, mimics the positions that you need to get into in your sport. So for a hesitation dribble, what needs to fire when you step your foot back? When you get low on defense, what needs to fire? When you need to cross someone up, stop on a dime, when you're sprinting, when you're jogging, when you're jumping, when you're rotating, when you're throwing your arms overhead, when you're pulling, what needs to engage? And then train for that in every position first in a controlled way. Train in a controlled and predictable manner first. Okay? Then you train progressively.
and and then you train more progressively in more advanced unpredictable movements that does not mean you already jump to this okay excuse me it does not mean you jump to this it means you need to take your movements you do in the gym and progressively make them more unpredictable okay this means now you're on one leg this means now you're on one toe it means now you are one arm on the floor one leg up okay you're doing things that make you a little bit more challenged it forces you to fire muscles you're not used to but they still mimic the positions you have to get into for your sport and this is so important if you cannot do it in a controlled manner what makes any of us think we can do it in a fast unpredictable manner okay this is why it takes time this is why it is very important to not take this lightly we can't just expect ourselves to jump from here to here without taking into consideration what it actually takes to get there what it took for us to actually get that injury how much poor mechanics has happened over time not just in our sport in athletics but also in our strength training how much has our foot been collapsing how much has our shoulder not been in a good position how much are we using our lower back and ab movements how much are we not able to feel our abs our glutes our lats our shins all the muscles that are important for any basic fundamental strength pattern can we do things on one leg can we do it on one leg and one arm this is what your athletics are asking of you. So we have to account for that. We can't just jump from physical therapy to performance. Okay. This is why it's so key to consider that it's probably going to take you the first four months to get your joints in a pain free and functional state. Okay. The next four months is spent training in positions that mimic your sport. In the next four months, spent rewiring all athletic movement mechanics. It means how to get low, how to change direction, how to slide your feet with proper engagement, with what to feel specifically at every moment in time. This is a more well thought out program, okay? Yes, it takes time. This goes for any injury, guys. Do this for a year and then allow yourself for multiple years of no injuries, no issues, better performance. Because now, guess what? If your body can get into a position easier, if your body has more access to certain muscles, it can then produce more force, more power, more speed, more engagement for every movement you do and guess what all the skills training stuff you guys do it is easier for you to, for you to do your skills training because what does your skills training require for you to be able to, to get low on defense to speed up to stop change direction do your footwork drills you need access to your muscles you need access to your joints you need to be able to feel the right things in the right time and then change pace, change tempo, change coordination. But none of that is possible if you don't have awareness of what to feel or how to feel, or any, even any access to those muscles. This is why it is very important to take a year, rewire this stuff, fix it from the ground up, okay? And then allow yourself for 30, 40, 50 years of performance, because now you know how to take care of yourself, now you know how to train, now you know how to get from rehab to performance. We aren't just some physical therapy company. We don't believe in that. Physical therapy doesn't work in an absolute sense. It's how you bridge the gap. We're taking care of everything in between, all the way from your strength training to your performance and rewiring how you run, jump, change direction, throw, and do the things that make you an athlete. Those are all the components of how we, how we deliver our program. And this is why it's so important that, we, that you don't think of this as physical therapy because it's not, not even close. Okay, so you have an injury right now, dealing with pain. Don't get bent out of shape trying to get back to your sport too fast, too soon. 
yeah, don't get too bent out of shape trying to get back to your sport too fast, too soon. I know and I acknowledge how hard this is emotionally on you. But look at this logically. Zoom out for a second. You are not basketball. You are a human being. If you start from that frame, if you start from the frame of you are a human, you are not an athlete, then you have to take into consideration how the body actually works. Not how you wish for it to work. That is so important. You are human above all else. Your sport, your organization is expecting you to perform. They want stats. They want to see numbers. They want to see you perform at the highest level because it's going to make them money. Your friends are depending on you because it gives them some sort of purpose. Your parents are wanting you to do it because they think that's your ticket. Whatever it might be, but at the end of the day, who cares about you, the human being? And I'm not saying you don't have a good support system. Some of you watching might have a great support system. But at the end of the day, you have to be your biggest health advocate. You have to understand how your body works in order for it, for you to know whether you are actually ready to perform in your sport or not. And we get this question all the time. When are we, when are we ready? When are we ready? If you're having to ask us, you're not ready. Simple as that. Because you haven't gone through the process of actually understanding how you got hurt in the first place. What mechanics led you here? What's limiting you? Why can't you engage those muscles? Why can't you get in that position? Have you rewired that? Have you gotten rid of all the pain signaling in your body in the first four months? Are you pain-free and functional in the most basic of movements, squatting, lunging, changing changing your direction with your, with your torso, pulling, pushing? Are you pain-free in any of those ranges? Step-ups, lateral range of motion, single leg movement. And if that's not the case, then we can't jump to the next step. We can't even jump here. We can't even jump to the athletic training part, let alone jump to rewiring your mechanics. Now, the thing is, none of these things you spend time on are absolutes. You're always doing this and this and this, always. Just a matter of proportion. In the beginning, you're doing mostly this. Then you're doing a lot more of this, but still doing this. Then you're doing a lot more of this, but still a ton of this to support this. And when you learn that, then you can take this for the rest of your athletic career and truly injury proof your body. Not because it's woo woo and you're, you're pulling out of your butt and it's a magical formula, like three months, four months, you can back, get back from an ACL injury. Eight months, you can back, get back from an ACL injury. No, it's because you are actually in the game. Your skin's in the game. You know what you're supposed to feel. You know you can't get into a basic position with your knee bent and you're sitting into one leg whenever you're doing some sort of pistol squat or some sort of low position. So how do you expect to jump or cut or change direction? You can see the translation and you understand that yourself as an athlete. And that's what we have to learn team. Okay. So if this makes sense to you, if this resonates with you, then make sure you comment below. And if you're being pressured right now by your parents to jump back in or your coach to jump back in, chances are they don't know themselves. What's the truth about the human body? But you have to take a stand for your own self, for your own body, before you let someone else dictate how you're going to live the rest of your life. Because this could be the difference between a long lasting career that's successful and one that gets cut short constantly because you jump too fast too soon, you get re-injured, you get secondary injuries, tertiary injuries, other injuries, and it keeps compounding over time. So instead, of this, you can go through a year process and rewire your entire body. So you can have 40 years, 50 years of performance without pain and injury versus the back and forth for six to seven years, and then your career is done. Okay, that's what we're here for. So if you need help with this, click the link below, you can book a time with one of us and we'll show you exactly what you need over the next 12 months. We'll build a plan for you, we'll map out a plan. And if you're ready to commit financially, commit with your time into this process, for the rest of your life, just think about what that's worth worth to you. And if it's worth a lot, look, we're here to support you. We're here for you. And we're happy to support you to the rest of your life. Peace.